this evening. Brother Mike Greck, would you open our service in prayer, sir? Amen. Welcome one another to the service this evening. Amen. All right, 225 to continue singing this morning, this evening. Wow. Starting the day over again, right? <laughs> I don't like to see Sunday end. 225, away in the main. We'll remain seated. We'll sing all three verses just to show you.
prayer for the offering. Dear Lord, thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for his love for us. He came to the earth to take us from our sins. Lord, let us be a special season to honor him both and glorify him always. Uh, I want to bring these tithes and offerings to the community of sons to carry the gospel around the corner and around the world. As Jesus says, we always do for your honor and glory. Amen. Amen. We continue singing this evening, 196, Angels We Have Heard on High. We'll stand together, we'll sing all four verses, 196. Say that may the 
Christmas carols. It's a blessing. Take your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We're going to continue. Our theme of the day has been this is a season of worship. We began in Sunday school talking about that this morning. And and then we looked at another aspect of it in the morning service. And then we're going to continue talking about that this evening. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. And I want to ask you a question. For a Christian, is there such thing as a difference between the secular and the sacred? Or the secular and the the spiritual. Notice what verse 19 says, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And I wonder if the truth of those verses has really impacted us. I mean the truth. There is a, a rich truth in these verses. And I wonder if it's really impacted us as it ought to. Let's pray and we'll look at the message tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to Gather around your word once again. I pray that you'd use your word in our hearts. You'd stir us, refresh us, revive us. Lord, I pray that you'd challenge and change us. And Father, I pray that you'd meet each need of every heart. May we leave here rejoicing in Christ, saying it was good to be in the house of the Lord together. It's good to be with God's people was good to sing praises together, to fellowship one with another, to pray together and give together, to learn the word of God together. Pray, Lord, you would bless us tonight. We look to you. We lean upon you. We ask for your blessing. We pray thy Holy Spirit who is in us, who is the very author of the scripture, would teach us the word of God tonight, illuminate 
Give us spiritual understanding. Illuminate our hearts and minds. We pray and ask and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, I wonder if these verses have really impacted us. And I say that because sometimes it seems like as Christians we sort of have two modes. <laughs> you know what I mean? We sort of have a, a spiritual mode and then we sort of have a secular mode. And it, it's almost like there's a switch that uh, we can turn on or we can turn off. Uh, depending on where we're at and who we're with. You know, if we act differently on Monday than we do on Sunday, then chances are what we're doing on Sunday is not very real. It's, it's not very real. Um, what I'm saying is this. Our actions, our attitudes, uh, our words... Everything we say and do should be consistent, whether it's Sunday, whether it's in here, or whether it's Monday and it's out there. Everything we say and do, our words and our deeds, should be consistent. Um, things shouldn't change just when we come into this building. Um, and things shouldn't change when we leave this building. In other words, we, we don't sort of flip a switch and come in here and then we go back out the doors and we revert back to um, normal mode, right? Uh, we shouldn't have two modes as a Christian. Why? Because of what verses 19 and 20 tell us. <laughs> There's no such thing as a line of demarcation between uh, the secular and the sacred or the spiritual. Let's read our verses again. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God. You see, because the Spirit of God dwells in me, um, I should be praising Him and glorifying Him as we say 24-7, right? 365 days a year. There's not two modes in my life. No, because Christ is in me, and because I'm the temple of the Spirit of God, then every day, is a holy day, right? Every place is a holy place. And every task is a sacred task. Now you understand that this building is not the temple of God. It is the temple of God right now because you are in it. And you are the temple of God if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now, I've been here 17 and a half years, so you know how I feel about this place. You know that this is a very special place to me. You know that the local church is God's plan. You cannot read your Bible, your New Testament, and not see that. That the uh, local New Testament church is God's plan for God's people to come together and to collectively, corporately, worship him. You know that it's God's plan for us to come together and to provoke one another to love and to good works. Not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, but to exhort one another. We understand that. You know that I understand that and that that's what I believe and that's what the Bible teaches. But understand what I'm telling you tonight is that this place is not the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that means the Holy Spirit lives in you. Not just when you're in here, but when you're out there. Not just on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday as well. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 says, 
Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? That's an amazing truth. I want you to think about it. Let that sink in and soak in. You are the temple of God. That tells me that I should act no differently when I'm out here than I do in here. You know, some people wouldn't think of cursing in, in, in here. They'd curse out there. Some people wouldn't think of telling a lie in here, but they'd tell one out there. Certain people wouldn't think of acting certain ways in here, but they act that way out there. No. No, what's the scripture say? Ye are the temple of God. That means there's, there's no difference for me in between the, the sacred and the secular because I'm the temple of God all the time, 24 <laughs> 7. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. So every day is a holy day. Every place is a holy place. And every task is a sacred task. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16 says, Ye are the temple of the living God. Let that sink in, soak in. God lives in you. You are the temple of the God of heaven. Now try to wrap your mind around that. I tell you, as they say, that will blow your mind. <laughs> You are the temple of the living God. Ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And so folks, listen. Absolutely, I come together on Sunday to worship, but I want to worship on Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday. I want to worship every day. Why? Because I'm the temple of the Spirit of God. He is in me. That means every day is a day of worship for the child of God. For the believer, the, this, this imaginary line of demarcation between sacred and secular has been erased because God lives in us. The living God lives in us, listen, on a full-time basis. On a full-time basis. So what am I saying? Well, here's what I'm saying. You and I don't have to act spiritual. We are spiritual. We are spiritual. Now, we need to act spiritual too. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? We don't have to pretend on Sundays or on Wednesdays or when we're together. We don't have to act spiritual we are spiritual because the Spirit of God lives in us full time. And thus everything we do, every word, every act, every deed, every attitude, everything is to be done in His name and to be done for His glory. And again, it doesn't matter whether we're here at church, it doesn't matter whether we're at home or whether we're at school or whether we're at work, it doesn't matter whether we're at Walmart. Or whether we're on vacation. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all. Do all to the glory of God. Why? Because you're always the temple of God. Always. So it doesn't matter what you're doing. By the way, he's saying whether you eat or drink. These are just the common things of life. Sometimes we think, well, go to church. I'm going to go to church and worship. That's good. That's good. But you know, you don't really come to church and just find the worship here. You bring the worship with you. <laughs> you bring the worship with you because Christ is in you. The Spirit of God is in you. And yes, we do come to church to worship. But you ought to worship in your home as well. And you ought to worship on your job. And you ought to worship in the grocery store because Christ is in you. God is in you. Full time. All the time. There's no difference between the secular and the sacred. I mean, it doesn't matter whether I'm right here behind this pulpit or whether I'm eating or drinking or whatever I'm doing. 
I'm the temple of God, and I should be glorifying God always, everywhere, in everything I do, in every place, all the time. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21 sums it up pretty well because there Paul simply said this, for me to live is Christ. That's what he's saying. <laughs> for me to live is Christ. I mean, as long as I have breath in my body, it's Christ. Why? I'm the temple of the Spirit of God. All the time. Everywhere. Everywhere I'm the temple of God. Now, I don't know about you, but over the years I've heard people make different statements. And I understand what they're saying. Sometimes people say uh, something like, well, you know, uh, politics and religion don't mix. Really? I hear people from time to time say, well, uh, well, you know, this is business. Oh, well, that changes it, doesn't it? See? Well, this is business. I hear people say, you know, well, you know, uh, faith, that's, that's a private matter. That's a private matter. <laughs> really? Really. You know what's wrong with that? It's not what the Bible teaches. It's not what the Bible teaches. Every day is a holy day. Every place is a holy place. Every subject is a holy subject. Every task is a sacred task. Why? Because I am the temple of the Spirit of God all the time, everywhere, in everything. Full time. There's no line between sacred and secular. And we need to understand that as Christians, as believers. I want you to turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. This is a familiar verse. And look at it with me. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. This sort of encapsulates what I'm saying tonight, sort of captures the essence of it. See, this is a season of worship, but I want you to know every day is a day of worship, <laughs> and for us it's always a season of worship, because it says in verse 17, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed... Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Now, now notice what it says. Whatsoever ye do. Now, I'm going to give you something deep on that. Alright? What's that mean? What means everything? Isn't that deep? Whatsoever you do. What's it mean? You don't need me to tell you what that means. I mean, there it is, it's self-explanatory. What does that mean? Well, it, it means everything. It excludes nothing, and it includes everything. That's what he's saying. Whatsoever ye do. What does that tell me? Well, it tells me there's no line between the sacred and the secular, or the spiritual and the secular, because what's he telling me? Whatsoever ye do, that excludes nothing and it includes everything. The, the line doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Now notice what he says. Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, notice, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul and I were spending some time together lately, Paul Alderman and I. And we, he said, i got to tell you, he said, remember when you first came? And He said, we're, you were dealing with a verse that had all in it, and you said, I'm going to tell you what all means. And he said, I perked up. He said, we're going to hear something deep. <laughs> and you remember what I said. Yeah, all means all. That's what it means. And he said, I just was like, oh. <laughs> but that's, that's what it means. If you cannot do it, 
in the name of Jesus Christ. You better not do it. Now that's what that means right there. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. If it's not according to his will and he would not approve of it and you cannot attach his name to it, then you better not do it. That's, that's what that means. Now, I was thinking about this. You know, some of the uh, sports figures endorse certain products. I remember years ago, uh, everybody wanted a pair of Air Jordans. Remember that? Michael Jordan had endorsed these sneakers. And everybody wanted a pair of Air Jordans. Well, notice what he's saying here. <laughs> to do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know what that means? If we can't sign his name to it, if he would not endorse it, if he would not approve of it, then we better not do it. Because what he says is this. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. If it doesn't represent his character, if it's something that's contrary to his character, then we better not do it. That's what that means. Now, what, what, am, I, what am I saying? I'm saying, listen, there's no sacred and secular. Well, I can do this because we're not in church. Well, we know better than that. Well, I can do this because, you know, not with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't want to be a stumbling block. Boy, we can, we can uh, rationalize it, can't we? No, we understand what this is saying. If, if, if Christ would not endorse it, if, if he wouldn't sign it, if you will, if we, if we can't attach his name to it, if he wouldn't approve of it, then we better not do it. See, this is the litmus test for everything we do. And folks, listen, this is the plane we should dwell on, all right? This is the plane we should dwell on, Colossians 3.17. This, this is where we should live as Christians. You see, I, tonight, I could start giving you a list of do's and don'ts. Well, I could tell you, do, do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that. And I could give you a list of do's and don'ts, but you know what? You would find a way around those things. You'd find loopholes in those things, wouldn't you? If I gave you a list of do's and don'ts. But if I give you this principle, try to get around it. You can't. Oh, you can can be dishonest with yourself and I can too but you cannot get around this principle right here what's he say do all huh all in the name of the Lord Jesus by the way did you see what he says right before that whatsoever ye do in what in word or deed we ought to be able to sign his name to every word and every deed. That's, that's a high call, isn't it? That's a high call right there. In word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. By the way, look at that, that uh, phrase again. In the name of the Lord Jesus because I want you to understand, I'm not going to go into this tonight, but not only does that mean with his approval, but it means with his authority. And if you have his approval, you will have his authority. But there, there's something rich there too, though we're not going to talk about it a lot tonight. What that means is, in the name of the Lord Jesus, if you what you're doing is, if you're doing it with his approval, with his endorsement, you'll also have his power. You'll have his enabling, you see. And then it'll be fruitful. What you're doing will be productive. 
And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Note the next part of the verse. Giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. In other words, if it's something that, that Christ approves and therefore has His authority behind it, it will be something that glorifies God. That's what He is saying there. It will glorify God. But it also means the converse. Unless it's done in the name of the Lord Jesus, unless it's done with his approval and therefore with his authority, it will not. In fact, it cannot glorify God. It cannot glorify God. And by the way, this was Peter's goal. He said this in 1 Peter 4.11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things, in all things, wait a minute, I thought there was a secular and a sacred. No, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Through how many th things? Through all things. <laughs> you know what that means? It means I'm the temple of God, and since I'm the temple of God and God lives in me, I'm to live for one purpose, and one purpose only, and that is to glorify God. That's what it means. By the way, if I do that, and I want to tell you something, I'll be a good husband. If I do that, I'll be a good father. If I do that, I'll be a good pastor. If I do that, I'll be a good friend. If I follow this principle. If I understand this truth. God lives in me full time. Full time. I am the temple of the living God all the time. That means every day is a holy day. I'm repeating this on purpose. I know I've said it two or three times already. I don't want you to forget it. All right? When you leave here, you're going to be able to quote this. And I want you to be able to quote it. Because this is what I'm telling you. Every day is a holy day. Every place is a holy place. Every task is a sacred task. And we need to understand that. We need to grasp that. And the principle that I am to live my life by is if the Lord Jesus Christ would not approve of it, if He would not endorse it, if I cannot attach His name to it, if it does not represent His character, I should not do it. You don't need a list of do's and don'ts. You live on that plane. You live by that principle, by that truth. You'll know what to do and what not to do. I mean, that, that settles it. It's sort of like all the law is fulfilled in this. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and love thy neighbor as thyself. You want a list of do's and don'ts? I'll give it to you. Here it is. Whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. It's all right there. It's all right there. That was Peter's goal. Paul had the same goal because he said this. Again, I quote 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all. Do all to the glory of God. Do all to the glory of God. Again in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. I want to read our verses again. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? I, I just can't get over that. Folks that is an, that is an amazing truth. And again, I, I don't think it's impacted me as it ought to. I read that and, and I can't just read over that. That is an amazing, incredible, profound truth.
truth which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price, therefore what? Here it is again, glorify God. Say, there it is again. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And so as one who is indwelt by the Spirit of God, I have a tremendous responsibility both to God and to others, right? I have a tremendous responsibility to God to glorify Him, and I have a res tremendous responsibility to others that they would be able to see that this temple is under new management, right? So I have a tremendous responsibility both to God and to man, to God to glorify him, to men that they might be able to see that God is in me, that Christ is in me, that this temple is under new management. And I just wonder, boy, the impact that that we would have if we really grasp this. The impact that we would have if we realize and, and, and if we at least in our minds erase that imaginary line uh, between the secular and the sacred and we realize that, that everything we do and everywhere we're at and every word and every deed that it's all to be done in the name of Jesus Christ and, it, and it's all to be done for the glory of God. I wonder what kind of impact that we could have. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? There's no sacred and secular. It's all spiritual for us because the Spirit's in us. It's all spiritual for us. Start doing everything, every day, everywhere with that truth in mind. With the approval and the endorsement and with the authority of Jesus Christ. Here's a verse you know well, but I'm going to read the next verse that goes along with it. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you can quote, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And here's the next verse. And all things, all things are of God. Huh. All things. Well, there went that idea of the secular. All things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. There's no switch to turn off the, the secular and go to the sacred or turn off the spiritual and the sacred and go to the secular. What's he say? All things are of God. There's no such thing as just worshiping on Sunday. Or Sunday morning religion. What's he say? All things are of God. One writer said this. They're praising God on Sunday. They'll be all right on Monday. It's just a little habit they've acquired. Hmm. I don't like him. <laughs> They're praising God on Sunday. They'll be all right on Monday. It's just a little habit they've acquired. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Colossians 3.3. 3. For ye are dead. That is your old man. Old person you used to be. And your life is hid with Christ in God. <coughs> Boy, that's rich too, isn't it? Your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, 
Oh, he's our life. There's no, no difference whether we're in here or out there. He's our life. Shall appear. Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. That's Colossians 3.3. 3. Now it's just a few verses later. If you come to verse 17 that we've broken down tonight. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed. So if verses 3 and 4 describe you. That is you're saved. Your life is hid with Christ in God. If that describes you, then verse 17 is for you. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. One old preacher, Ian Thomas, wrote this. He said, to be in Christ, that is redemption. But for Christ to be in you, that is sanctification. That's sanctification. That should change our lives. To be in Christ, well, that makes you fit for heaven. But for Christ to be in you, that makes you fit for earth. Makes you fit for earth. To be in Christ, that changes your destination. But for Christ to be in you, that changes your destiny. The one makes heaven your home. The other makes this world his workshop. His workshop. You know what the best argument for Christianity is supposed to be, don't you? You know. It's supposed to be Christians. Now, wait a minute. I said the best argument for Christianity, not against Christianity. The best argument for Christianity is supposed to be Christians. <laughs> Folks, we're not only supposed to be witnesses, we're supposed to be part of the evidence. Right? We're not only supposed to be witnesses, we're supposed to be part of the evidence. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your what? your good works, and glorify, there it is again, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Every day is a what? It's a holy day. Every place is a what? A holy place. Every task is a sacred task. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. Thank you that we could meet together tonight Sing your praises, fellowship together, have our hearts encouraged, and thank you for your word that challenges us, that's a light unto our path, the lamp unto our feet. Thank you for the word of God that cleanses our way, that is a discerner of our thoughts and our hearts. Thank you for the word of God that changes us, that conforms us to your word and to your will and to your son, Jesus Christ. Fathers, we leave this place tonight Pray we'd, pray we'd leave with a new realization. Oh Lord, it's not that we didn't know it. But it's that sometimes we forget. We fail to remember. Lord, that we are the house of God. That we are the temples of your precious Holy Spirit the spirit of your son, Jesus Christ. 
And Lord, help us when we leave this place to live like it. Not as if there's a switch we turn off and we sort of revert back to default mode or to normal behavior. May we leave here with a realization that we're the temples of the living God. Might we live, might every word be spoken and every deed be carried out in the spirit of that truth and the power of that reality. And might we do all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ or might we not do it at all? Might in all that we do, might we glorify thee for thou art worthy. And we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take our hymnals 369. 369. Let's just sing that first verse together. Let's stand. I want you to think about the words as we sing them. Brother Dave Morey, would you dismiss us in prayer this evening, sir?